going to try to make this as, pra as practical as we can. Uh, Max has just talked about uh, this web page that we have there. It's for free. Feel free to actually go in and enjoy. I'm going to give you the the address. First of all, I, I don't have any discourses to discuss with the uh, with the audience. So I think it's 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 very handy. It helps a lot, and it took a, a, a lot of time for everyone to actually put that together. And it's for free, which is the most important part. Okay. So here you have the address. You're going to have that at the very end of the course with the presentations. And you just need to go there, and then here they're going to be able to see all the manipulations that Max just did. But the most important is, like, uh, I think that the hands-on for the image acquisition. And the good thing is, is, is going to be an interactive interface. So we are going to talk uh, here about the uh, Philips Epic uh, 7. It's the one that we have in our OR. And afterwards, we're going to talk about the, the Vivid E9. Okay, So the machine that you're going to be working with is the E95, which is an updated version. Okay, At the time that we did the, the videos, we uh, had the, the old one. Okay, So this is what is going to come when you go there. You have uh, a little bit of introduction. How are we going to actually manage all that? And what are the knobs that you are actually going to need to press for that? Okay, so to start with, okay, uh, that's part of uh, what Max actually explained: optimization, focus, and gain. I think it's very important when uh, you guys are taking uh, when you guys are taking an, an, a two D image before uh, you are going to get a three D. You need to optimize your gain and your focus. That's extremely important. Uh, you need to actually go with the focus and you need to focus to the structure of interest, okay? If we want the micro bar, we go there. If we want the LD, I will actually focus over here. And then be sure that you actually have the, 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 the proper image before actually hitting the 3D. And as Wendy was explaining in the first lecture, it's extremely important. If your 2D image is bad, you're not going to be able to get a, a good 3D image uh, uh, with that, okay? So, we are going to go through the whole possibilities when we are actually using the Philips machine, okay? We are going to talk about X-Plane, Live 3D, uh, Full Volume, and 3D Zoom. Here, we are going to start with uh, X-Plane, okay? So when we talk about X-Plane, <coughs> it's, it's kind of it's going to give you like the perspective of the image that we have in our classical, for example, we are using from the four chamber, and then you're going to get a perpendicular plane that is going to be in real time. I know it's two, two, two D images, but you really are using 3D technology here. So your matrix array is actually doing that and it's cutting the planes and it's allowing you to see that. I think that's very important when we are visualizing our tick valves, you can get them in the both planes. But when you are visualizing the, the left ventricle, you can actually get the full anterior and inferior wall and not only the inferior septal and the anterior lateral, okay? And this is going to be applying for the cuspid valves <coughs> or for whatever structure we want. For example, when I go to the left lateral appendix, I like to have this X plane because it's really going to help me to have the two views there at the same plane, so I can see is that uh, a little uh, uh, different <coughs> left lateral appendix or is that a thrombus? So these two images can give you a lot of information regarding that. You know? So I think it's a very uh, a very easy easy way to actually start yourself to introduce to the to the really <coughs> capabilities of your machines. Okay. So this is an example of the short axis. Then at the moment, you put your cursor in the center, you will activate <coughs> the left plane node, and it's doing that too. So, and then you will go, and you will be able to actually assess uh, the two images at the same time. This is very handy too for procedural things, like when you are inserting a guide wire, you can see it in two planes. When you are actually doing a mitral clip, it's actually really handy too. So there are several applications that we can actually use it too. Same thing for the right ventricle from the the, from the transatlantic <coughs> view, and you're going to be able to actually see the whole walls, okay? So, moving along, so this is an example of a Taverns uh, uh, Sapiens 3. I, I personally think it's very important when you are actually measuring your analogs to know exactly where you are cutting. If you actually are displaying an x plane, you can certainly see what's the shape of your uh, aortic area just before actually doing that. You can even use that afterwards I will explain you how in the clinical cases to actually measure the 3D uh, RT valve area or the 3D LDOP area, which is probably more accurate because the RT valve area is uh, uh, calcified, and how to get uh, a real area. Because most of us know like the LDOP is elliptic uh, more than circular, no? that is what we are assuming. 
and this is a good case after deployment uh, before inserting the valve. Uh, the cardiologist just deploy the valve and we can see the actual of that. We know for sure here in the 3D image this is the right coronary cast. We don't know for sure if this is the nose or the left. As soon as we get the explain, we all know in the atrial septum that the flat is actually in the non coronary cast and you can tell the cardiologist, okay? So those are examples on how to use that technology. So going over the next step, so like 3D is probably the easiest way. So you go there, you just press your knob on like 3D, okay? And automatically an image will generate it. As uh, Wendy was explaining at the beginning, those are narrow images, so you have 60 degrees, but then you have only elevational planes will be only 30 degrees. So it doesn't capture a lot. So that's not a good image, for example, for visualizing the left ventricle because you are not <coughs> going to be able to get the whole volume there, okay? But this good image to get a, a full, like for example, in a short axis of the aortic valve, to get an impression is that valve I have to don't know, is this going to help me? This will give you probably the right depth, okay? So when we do that, and that's what Wendy was explaining, it's not so important how big is the pyramid, because now we have, specifically on the Phillips, you have the elevation, so you can actually focus where you want to be. You can be in the center, as you can see here, or you can be in the front and the back, and you can manipulate that to go on top of the, the left ventricle, in the center, or just in the back, and then you have the elevational width, which is going to allow you to increase the sector. But you will pay a price for that. Whenever you increase your sector, your quality image is going to be decreased. So we need to be a little bit <coughs> and play between the, the two. But this one is really good for actually procedures. It gives you a high temporal and spatial resolution, and it's a very good clarity. You are inserting a catheter and you want to visualize it with 3D. Okay, so it's, it's mostly reserved for that. Okay, so those are examples. So, and I want to give you a little head up. So this is the new X8 from Philips, okay? The quality is actually uh, pretty good. So they are able to provide you a single bit in color up to 16 hertz. You will find that uh, doing 3D color is sometimes difficult to get uh, the right image, and you normally need to gate, and then you will have the possibility of actually discharge with the ventilation, the cautery. It's not always easy to actually gate an image, especially when you are in the OR. So now they are providing the visual probe that is able to actually see the 16 hertz, which is more or less what we are going to see exactly the same with uh, with uh, GEG, okay? So again, an example of an aortic valve and how to use this uh, technology, okay? So another mode is like the full volume, okay? So this is going to be your 90 per 90 pyramid. You can actually increase it to a maximum of 120 and 120, which is uh, pretty good. And that's the modality that you guys are going to want to use when you are assessing your right ventricle or your left ventricle, big, big structures, okay? You want to have a good quality, so you have it there, you just go on the volume. I, I normally, as Mark was mentioning, I always like to have my 2D planes, which is going to be four chamber, and then this is going to be the two chamber. So to be sure that I'm including the whole ventricle, okay? And once you are here, I think it's important to know that the image that is generated is from the back of the heart, okay? Because if you have the whole image here and it's a pyramid of 90 per 90, you will only be able to see the surface of the heart and everything will be yellow. So what they do is they give you that image, but if you want, you can reset clocking and then you will get the full picture, okay? So, but this is easier for us to orient it, but that doesn't mean that the image that you are capturing is half the left ventricle, it's the whole left ventricle there, okay? So that's important for us. And again, same thing for here, elevation of width and elevation of front, back, and center. You can increase your sectors to both sides. We will play with the machine and we will do that. And then the, the, the gating, okay? So one of the things is when we go there, we can actually gate to actually try to obtain a better frame rate, okay? So what we do is the line density, imagine that you have 10 lines in a single image, you have 10 lines for the, like imagine that this is a CT that gives you 10 cuts and it's in a single image, okay? So what we are going to do is reduce that to, if we go to six bits, to a six, and those 10 cuts are going to be in one image and in the other and in the other. So the quality is much better, but if there is movement, like ventilation, so you are actually going to, you are actually going to, to be, um, to have a stitch out <coughs> because the images are moving one from the other, okay? 
but I think it's a very uh, handy tool. So those are examples, again, for uh, the ventricle. So my recommendation, you go make sure that you have everything in as much as you can. Sometimes when you have big ventricles, it's even difficult to catch everything and to get a good, a decent uh, frame rate, okay? Then you can actually go and in image selection, you can select, you are actually happy with that. And then you can actually use the software from the machine to generate a 3D ejection fraction. And we will uh, show you how to do that afterwards in the workshop, okay? So those are examples of the right ventricle and volume, okay? The technology actually from the uh, from this machine and it can actually provide you. The problem with that is this software is, uh, is actually uh, generated for the left ventricle. And uh, here we are missing normally uh, part of the infundibular wall. So you will get an approximation of uh, how much it is, but it's not as accurate as a dedicated software for the for the right ventricle, okay? So, and more examples from the aortic valve, okay? So you go to the long axis, doesn't matter if you're getting the long axis or axis, <coughs> as soon as you get enough elevation, you're going to include everything. You can come from here, from the short axis, and those are the images. If you take it from the short axis, this image is going to be here, this image is going to be here. You can pick color. Which I think for the color is good, you can actually see it from here. And then you can do many, many things afterwards, like tracing the vena contractor area and things like that, okay? So it's very good technology. Uh, for full volume, is my personal recommendation when you go to actually do 3D color. It's the best quality of the image. You can actually use 3D zoom or 3D light, but uh, I personally think with full volume and cropping the image to the minimum, it gives you, uh, for me personally, like the, the best. Uh, the best quality image, okay? Uh, 3D zoom, so this is super handy. This is especially, I think, uh, mostly dedicated for the mitral and the tricuspid valve. It's going to generate a short uh, pyramid, okay? Normally we're talking with you and the other ones between around like 60 degrees, that's what it's generating. But because it's cropping, you can actually position the box and you can move the size of the box. And as was what you were mentioning, if you want to go for the mitral valve, I would always recommend to actually take a little bit, go to a five chamber and take a little bit of the of the aortic valve because you want to orient yourself and you want to present that to the surgeon in an AM phase view, which is your aortic valve on the top and the nice smile of the mitral below. Okay, and then we will show you how to actually do that. Okay, I'm going to put some examples of uh, 3D zoom. Okay, so. This is a uh, bicuspid bath that we have, where we can see uh, perfectly the raffi, we can see with color Doppler, and again. So this is 52 hertz. At the moment that you go to color, you need to actually keep everything, like the CT, to actually be able to, to reach 15 hertz there. When we were able to actually do that with a single beat with a new probe, okay? So th those are things that the new technologies are actually going to help us a lot, okay? So we are going to change now, and we are going to go to the G. Okay, so the same thing will actually come up. It will display like the whole screen. You will have how to actually uh, follow on. And the good thing is that you are going to be pressing the knobs and telling the program what do you want to do, and then it will show it to you, okay? So when we go to the G and on the new machine, you don't need to do that. Electronically, like the software in the new new machine is going to actually give you like a, an optimal focus. So you will need you will you will not need to do that. If you have an old in a, a, a nine, so you will actually need to do actually this. Same thing for the gain. I think that's important. The gain is going to give you two B uh, two B two B Okay, compared to the other one, which uh, we are going to actually for money have that. So I think that's an important difference between the two the two platforms. Okay. So acquisition mode, so guess what? So multi -view. yes, that's the equivalent to the explain from Philips, okay? And it's basically the same. You have the node there, you press, and you have the two structures, one versus the other, okay? It's a 90 degrees, it's a simultaneous scanning, and we personally like wanted to assess if you want your right ventricle, or if you want your left ventricle and see both chambers at the same time, if you want your aortic valve to be seen in, the, in both views at the same time, or if you want your aortic valve basically seeing the same in the same time, okay? Those are examples, for example, of the right ventricle. 
that's uh, actually from one of the many uh, pulmonary and arteriectomies that we do here. And it's actually good because you can formally see your right ventricle in the hippocampus and you can actually see the whole infundibular wall that we are not able to actually see here. And you can see how the mobility is with a single click, okay? So, now we are going to talk about the bird's uh, view, okay? So the bird's view in G is, is, is close to what is the, 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 the live 3D intellect, okay? It's a short uh, section, it's a, f a 50, a 50 degree, but it only has like 10 of uh, elevational uh, depth, okay? You can always increase it. When you have the volume shears, you can always increase how much you want, but it's normally, they, they normally use it uh, for actually seeing like very uh, close structures or if you want to actually do like a procedural structure. The same thing and the same features that we have with the films, we have the front and the back and by default it is going to be the center. So that's the images that you are going to actually be changing. And again, with the volume, you're going to be able to actually expand it more, reduce it, and then on the lateral, getting bigger or smaller, okay? So what happens if we want to actually get a little bit uh, uh, better frame rate? And as you can see here, there's the second, that's how much is increasing, okay? The moment that you go there, you are actually from one to two to three to four to six. So the maximum recommended that the three D guidelines from the American Society of Echo require like a third guidelines to try to actually get it at four bits if you can for the quality to be actually better, okay? So I think it's it's actually another functionality that we need to be aware of. So those are examples of the bird view can give you this. It's not very thick, it will never include the whole RV, but to get an assessment uh, with a 3D image is actually pretty handy too. <coughs> so we are going to go now to the medium and large volumes. Those are going to be the equivalent uh, for the full volume in the fillet. So I'm going to say it. Like you have the medium size, it's a small pyramid of 35 per 35, and the large size is 60 per 60. Remember, like the full volume gives you like 90 per 90, so it's bigger actually. Those ones are a little bit smaller. And normally, what they would think 60 per 60, I think it's uh, with this large volume, is actually ideal for micro and short track casting. Uh, 35 per 35, you can actually do get the left lateral appendix and get a little growth there. And it, it, it really doesn't matter because at the end, you're going to be able to play with your volume and decide how much of these data sets that we were talking you want to include. The minimal to get you the maximum information. That should be the goal when we are doing 3D, okay? And then again, all those images can be gated. So you have one bit, your frame rate is going to be standard. The moment that you start <coughs> to actually get more bits, the better that your image is actually going to get. And especially for software analysis, it's always good to have a good frame rate so you can get like a more accurate result, okay? So the last, uh, this is uh, some examples of uh, large volume acquisitions where you can actually afterwards use the, the software to, to have your, your EF calculator. Same thing for the RV, a specific R RV design on the new uh, B95, okay? And it will give you the ejection fraction, fraction uh, change, and even your passing, okay? So, and those are examples of uh, medium volume acquisitions and the software that can actually be used afterwards to actually determine measurements and those are going to be automated and you're going to play with them <coughs> in the hands -on. okay? So just to finish, we have the 4D zoom, which is the equivalent to the 3D zoom, <coughs> and again, it's the same principle, okay? It's just a, a little block, so you go there, 4D zoom prepare, and then you will get the region of interest, you can actually move where you want, and you can actually increase the size, and then once uh, it's actually done, <coughs> you can go to the right, and then you're actually structuring everything. When you're happy with the sector that you want to include, then you're going to actually choose press, and then the image is going to generate, and from there we are going to manipulate it from the, from the project, okay? So, some examples of that are, for example, for the micro valve, okay? Same thing with color, you would just press the color and then you would get the images like those ones and the lovely uh, tattoos from, from the surgeon's scalp, okay? So, thank you very much. I think it's now time to take a little break. 
and enjoy the coffee, okay?